Friends, thank you so much for joining us here on Facebook Live for Baby Yoga. My name is Laura. I'm with the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. I am thrilled to join all of you for the first program in our Discovery Baby series. And we have some friends joining us today. We have Morgan. Give a wave, Morgan. We have Liam. Hello, Liam. It's good to see you. <laughs> and we have Kathy who will be leading us in baby yoga this morning. So I will turn it over to our guests and our friends, and then we'll have opportunities to take questions afterwards. So if you have any of those, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, but we'll be getting to some of those. Let's get on with the yoga this morning. Maybe Liam and Morgan will be back with us in just a moment to run through some poses. But Kathy is going to show us a few of her favorites that you can do at home. Great. Thank you, Laura. One of the things that children, even younger than six months, are really receptive to, and I think prove some benefits to moms who maybe are dealing with babies that are having upset tummies or just a little bit of tummy distress. It's called corkscrew. And you can do this with a baby kind of regardless of their age or even up into toddlers. So I'll demonstrate here with my um, very adorable meditation teddy bear called Medi Teddy. We've met Medi Teddy before. He is a favorite around here. <laughs> you lay the baby down down on your lap and then with their legs just sort of comfortably in your hands you raise up and then start to circle the legs and you're really rotating sort of through their digestive tract right above their hips just gently in one direction and then back in the other direction and through that internal massaging sometimes gas that gets trapped will have a way of releasing and babies think it's really fun to do. And it helps, as I said, sometimes with soothing an upset tummy. The other thing that babies will do naturally, but they love having a little bit of assistance and having caregivers engaged in the process is also just super beneficial developmentally. And it's a, it's a pose called actually happy baby. And again, babies are on their back and legs are up, try to get their hands to grab a hold of their feet and then they will naturally start to rock back and forth. But you might encourage them just a little bit. This is a nice thing to do um, after diaper change or as you're transitioning maybe into nap time or bedtime, just helping them sort of soothe. And then it can become something that they do automatically to self-regulate if they wake up and are fussy or having a difficult time just sort of getting themselves in a position where they can relax and go to sleep. That happy baby pose is really a fun one to do. And, you know, there's really, there's really no wrong way to do baby yoga with kids. You just, I would say that the main thing is to be flexible, take their lead and let them feel as though they can use their own imagination with a few prompts and, and a plan to do the kinds of things that maybe they'll come back to and enjoy. Kids always like to do a little older kids, say once they're walking and have a little more muscle control. For instance, when we do the kids yoga programs or family yoga at the Discovery Center, it's really fun to teach kids how to do tree pose, just standing on one leg and then bringing the other foot up just letting it be there. And then they can grow branches on their tree, bring their hands to namaste. It's fun because kids, generally speaking, are much better at doing all of the yoga poses than moms or dads. And mm. so having kids be able to show their mom or dad or their caregiver how, how adept they are. And then, for instance, having one child stand with their parent maybe behind them mm -hmm. learn how to you know build support against one another and of course the kids take the lead and as i said they're much better than their grown-ups they so often are well yeah. i know i know we have some parents watching at home who are thinking okay this baby yoga is great with medi teddy but i don't know about how it's going to work with my kid so we're going to bring back the experts now with morgan and liam and we're going to have you guide them through a few basic poses and and see how it works and see how that flexibility works when you're working with a real live kiddo does that sound good kathy 
That sounds great, Laura. And again, I would just say using yoga as a way to teach kids how to have fun, how to self-regulate, how to interrupt any kind of meltdown issues that are going on. It doesn't have to be something that you make a more formalized process as part of your parenting. Just are you ready to fun. do some baby yoga? Can do yoga? Good. Can you sit in your mom's lap? I think we should go on a ride in the boat. Okay, Ooh. so everybody's ready. I've got my teddy bear here who's going to go on a boat ride with us. Are you ready? We're going to rock side to side. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Can you feel the air blowing on your face? Right. Out on the water? Good. Just getting warmed yeah. up. How can you? Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Rocking in your boat. Nice. Okay. Boat ride's over. Come on back. How about if we stand up? I'm going to show you with my teddy bear. Stand all the way up. Can you take your arms and reach up overhead? Oh, I'm so big. Now, where are your toes? Where are your toes? Toes. Great toes. The bear is leaning over. He's fighting his toe. Can you see him? Yeah, so good. So good. That is excellent. Good job. Go down. Go down like that. Can you show me? That's a good job. Bend on over. And back up. Nice. Liam, do you, do you know one of my favorite animals is a penguin? You like penguins? Stand up nice and tall and bring your arms right by your side. One of my favorite things is a monkey. So I'm going to need your mom to help you with the monkey pose, okay? Morgan, if you can take Liam right under his arms, right around his tummy, we're going to flap our legs three times. One, two, three. Look at the bear. Look at the bear. Can you do it again? One, two, three. Up like your monkey. There you go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> One of the things that's really fun to do with kids is just go with wherever it takes them in terms of their interest. But books can be a really helpful tool for kids and give them some ideas. So this little book is called Yoga Bug. And it has lots of simple poses for kids that are familiar bugs they've seen them in other books maybe they're starting to see them outside the library has a wonderful set of resources for any of these kind of books um i am the jungle a yoga adventure is another really great resource and it's got beautiful illustrations oh. there's a kid doing the tree pose and reaching up tall up into the trees so you can see there's just lots of ways in which butterfly pose you can use pictures and things just in your own backyard to help you identify poses that you like to do Liam was just getting his great the yoga bug is there a particular bug that he likes the book? You see this is what Kathy has it's your yoga bug. There's spider or butterfly. Maybe you can sit on your mom's lap and show us how to do the butterfly pose. Can you do that? These are real great ways in which kids, especially starting as young as six months, and can the ways body parts yeah you can identify where your ears are can you show me your ears where's your ear ears, ears yes all the animals ears. Have listening ears 
Uh huh. Eight. Back over here. And there's a flipped beetle if you wanted to get all the way on your back. Wow, can you do that? Flipped beetle. Let's try. See, look. Just like that. Can you do that? Let's see. All the way down. Whoa! Good job. And can you touch your little feet? Touch your feet like this. And touch your feet. Well, like if you're if you've done yoga moms and dads it's a little like happy baby pose and all of these poses are really designed uh, not only to self-regulation but especially when you're thinking about happy baby and you're sort of rocking your baby from side to side or like earlier folks, it can relieve uh, any kind of gi your baby is experiencing gas pain or having trouble staying, you know, on a regular schedule, then have a movement where you rock from side to side or rotate can really be helpful in releasing gas pressure in baby's tummy. Yeah, good. Good job. And Easy to get kids in. Oh, we want, we want me to do yoga. Okay. Oh, <laughs> good job. Oh, no. Back. Okay. Okay, Kathy. What's Kathy going to do next? Okay, Liam, I know that you like to go and see big animals. So I want to talk to you about doing one of my favorite poses. It's called lion pose. You like the lions? What's the lion say? What does the lion say? Rah! When you say rah, be a lion. Take your arms up. Ready? One, two, three. Stick your tongue out. Ah! It's a lion. Ah! You know, kids are upset and they don't really know no. how to calm themselves down. So I was just sitting down with them and doing a few fun, simple poses like lunge or Liam, maybe you can be a gorilla. There's your lion. It's fun. Yeah. Doing the gorilla pose. Maybe we should show our friends at home how to do the gorilla pose. You know, a gorilla is just a big, big ape. So if you think about long arms, make your arms kind of wiggly and long. Yeah. yeah. And then take your fist to your chest and pound on your chest. Can you do that? Woo! Be in that control. All of that stress out of your body and interrupting whatever the little current meltdown. And believe me, moms, yeah. no matter what age they are, stopping. And trying to negotiate whatever it is that's causing it may not even be anything just taking the time out and interrupting whatever that situation is and doing a few fun simple yoga poses can break the help your self regulate and maybe even replace some tears with some after come on do you know how to namaste come here stay with us come here namaste with kathy namaste Namaste, Liam. No, say thank you. Namaste. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, for my yoga friend. Do you want to finish with a lion pose? I do. do one more lion. Ready? Ah. 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 Lion. Lion. Nice. Thank you so much. Yes. Liam, thank you so much. You've done such a good job with us today. <laughs> Lord, you not enough. What do you think, Liam? Is it time? Is do you want to go bye bye, Liam, and leave me and Kathy, and we'll chat? Did you love it? Are you saying bye bye? Bye. Bye. Bye, <laughs> bye Liam. <laughs> bye. Our little Maddie Teddy. <laughs> Namaste.
Hey, so Kathy, now that we have seen a little bit of um, real life baby Yoko with Liam, he is so precious and getting bigger all the time. Um, I wanted to throw a few questions at you from our audience, if that's okay. So we have a few questions about doing yoga with babies and folks can post in the comments if they have more of those. But let's just start off with, can you tell me a little bit about what are the benefits of baby yoga? Oh, absolutely, Laura. The benefits of baby yoga really primarily are about engaging with your with your child and allowing your child to see you really at their level with playful movement. So teaching kids not only that it's fun to interact at an early age with their caregiver in a way that brings smiles and joy. Additionally, it develops that skill of self-regulation. Yeah. So I like to tell parents that if you think about the last time you were out of breath, you were running, you were anxious, you were really frightened. Hopefully that's a really rare occasion, but, but we all know what that sensation feels like in our bodies. And so when kids get really out of control and they're trying to figure out their world, mm. Sometimes a simple thing like bringing them back to thinking about their breath. That's why I love doing the lion's breath. It's really silly and fun, but it can interrupt and release stress and tension. Mm -hmm. And it almost automatically will switch a kid from their fight or flight state of mind into rest and digest. Mm -hmm. it, it resets the tone and gosh, who doesn't need that, right? <laughs> Yes, I need that. I right. love the lion. I'm going to do that here. <laughs> right. It really does release tension. I mean, you are letting go of breath and stress in a in a kind of fun and silly, playful way. Yeah. Um, another question we've gotten from the audience, is baby yoga a good idea before as a bedtime ritual before bedtime or will it get my baby too excited to sleep? No, I think it's a really perfect transition for moms and dads to use as they're trying to get baby to sleep, just as you would maybe cuddling, reading a small story, you know, developing that pattern of a ritual surrounding any kind of routine is really what makes kids tick. Mm -hmm. They love having something that they can look forward to, that they know is a signal to bedtime. So, you know, doing the, the happy baby pose is a really good thing. I wouldn't, you know, necessarily do a lot of jumping up and down or those kinds of things, but having your baby feel the soothing atmosphere that you're creating by just some gentle movement right before bedtime is really great. Okay. That's a great tip. Thank you. Adults too. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love doing that kind of thing before bed. I think that's a really nice way to get into bedtime and establish some of those, that healthy sleep um, routine and hygiene that we talk about a lot. Um, so I think that that sounds awesome. Um, but, you know, as parents, we're always so nervous about baby bedtimes and, and we want to do everything exactly right to encourage that lots, nice, long stretch of sleep that we're all craving as parents when we have babies. Right. <laughs> um. Another question we've had is about music. Um, does music, is music helpful as a tool for baby yoga or is it, is it helpful if parents are looking for it? What are, what are some good tips for integrating music into the yoga session or is that even necessary or needed? really isn't necessary, but I think it's really, really fun. There are so many great kids yoga music playlists. If you go to any place where you normally would look for that kind of thing, um, digitally or at the library, it can allow for not only uh, a set of routine, like there is, there is a nominee song that is cute and kids can learn it themselves and be able to have a little yoga party with their stuffed animal or with their brothers and sisters. So I love incorporating music. Again, you would want to think about the time and the place. So if it's a nighttime routine, maybe having really gentle and soothing, you know, lullaby yoga is a really fun playlist as well. Yeah. Uh, for active, there's, oh my gosh, my favorite. And I, I, I would love to do this sometime, but we'd have to like sign all kinds of liability waivers. <laughs> it's called Baby Burrito. And you think you're 
younger child, you want to do it when they're like one or older and you have them lie down and you wrap them up like a burrito yeah. toward the end. And then of course you pull the blanket and they come rolling back out. <laughs> child who doesn't absolutely love baby burrito and it's from <laughs> i love that there's a lot of physical touch in that too which is really nice yeah yes. yeah, yeah um it's enough scary for kids you know because that's nothing that they normally do so that element of surprise and when will they get to the very end to be unrolled they giggle in delight <laughs> Um, I know in the past in some of your yoga videos and, and those of you who are watching, I really encourage you. We actually have a lot of um, awesome videos from Kathy guiding us through kids yoga on our website at kansasdiscovery.org backslash home. So there's tons of other stuff. Um, I know many of those videos you've been outside. Um, can you talk to us about benefits of doing yoga outdoors versus indoors? Is it how is it different? How is it similar? Um, just thoughts on, on that dynamic for yoga. Sure. I love doing yoga outside with kids, with grownups. It is, um, you know, it's just a way for us all to remember sort of our, our role in the universe. So you've got the entire big wide world outside to explore. That's good and bad with kids, right? So if you're trying to keep them a little more, like if you were teaching a, a class of many children, sometimes going outside, you just have to be prepared for it to go in a completely different direction, potentially, because there's so many other things that are cool that serve as distractions versus just being inside in your boring old house. Right. But I love it because you are exposed to elements in nature of air and water, earth, trees, vegetation, mm -hmm. bugs, things that you can bring into a conversation and an awareness with kids that maybe you otherwise, if you were just out playing, wouldn't think to do. Yeah. Teach them how to how how they think it would look to do a ladybug pose, for instance, mm -hmm. or standing like a tree or blowing with the wind. Mm -hmm. That's making me think of your animal ears yoga, which is one of my favorites where you were doing like the, the fox ears pose and like being a caterpillar and like all these beautiful imaginative things. Um, that is so fun for kids. My daughter and, loves that. And I love it because truly, Laura, it is accessible no matter where you are, no matter what your resources are. It really teaches kids to be aware of the environment around them and have fun with it and explore what it might feel like to have, you know, big elephant ears or tiny little fox ears. Mm -hmm. That's a super fun and imaginative for kids. But, the, you know, again, we do a lot of serious fun here at the Discovery Center. There's also some really serious benefits to mindfulness of thinking about things like different animals and how they hear. So there's there's some good stuff in there in addition to it being a lot of fun. Um, another question we had from our audience, um, grown up modeling, is there a benefit to doing poses alongside your kids? I think that there definitely is. And it, it, it shows a couple of things. Um, it, it can definitely build a, a deep sense of self-awareness with kids and appreciation for their abilities mm. to be to do something that they're seeing someone much older do. If you think about other activities that kids see us do, they're kind of out of reach for a lot of them, mm. right? Like we don't let them cook. We don't let them do all of those kinds of things, which are just not appropriate developmentally. But yoga is something that you can do with kids. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, they're usually better than adults because they're just so, you know, flexible. Um, that they, they build up a big sense of self-awareness. The other thing I love about it in a modeling perspective is showing teamwork. So for instance, if one of the things I like to do with kids in a group with their parents or caregivers is have them stand and do tree pose by themselves. And, you know, inevitably they lose their balance and, you know, they need to put both feet on the ground. But just showing them the simple way of supporting one another mm -hmm. by bringing their hands to one another's shoulders or to their back so that they've got some steadiness is a good way of demonstrating cooperation mm -hmm. and teamwork, that it isn't all just individual, that we really are all stronger when we're helping one another. Mm. 
I love that. I love that. There, are, man, there are there is so much depth to what kids are gaining when they do these things, isn't there? And it's fun. It's, yeah. it's okay. You're going to sit down and you're going to do yoga and you're going <laughs> to learn cooperation. Right? <laughs> how, how the world works. Right. Well, and I, I, I'm glad you said that. That's a good segue into into a question I had. You know, when we had Morgan and Liam here, we were seeing Liam being a very normal, distracted, wiggly toddler. Right. He wa he. He doesn't want to sit on the lap. He doesn't want to read the book. He wants to run around. He wants to do his own thing. He's engaged, but in like his own way. Right. And, and what are some tips you have for a parent who's who's trying to develop some routine around these things, who's having a kid who's just running all over? What, what are your tips for, for bringing them in and engaging them? You know, I think that that's a great question. There's There's no one way to do that. So everybody knows their own child and their own unique ways of helping them make that transition to that more active kind of getting it out of their system to coming back and sitting down. I think generally speaking, letting them go and getting it out of their system usually is about the most beneficial way and continuing to stay patient and interested and available yeah. for when they want to come down and sit down. You may be, um, noticed that Liam was interested in this, you know, little cardboard huh? yoga book and just having his mom sit and be patient waiting mm -hmm. with the book. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to encourage him to come back and sit down once he gets his wiggles out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. We saw Morgan using a lot of really good strategies. Um, I was seeing some, some things that I might use at home, but yeah, a lot of her just being present and wait, you know, letting him do circles around her and waiting for him to come back. Um, finding things that he was excited about that he could see himself on the camera. What is that? Toddlers love that so much. Um, those kinds of things. It was really great to, to see that. Um, and also to know that kids are going to do that and that's normal and that's okay. And it doesn't mean the activity is not beneficial. It's just kids being kids. Right. Or even if, if it doesn't, if that isn't the, the, the trigger that works with your child and they continue to, you know, are up and running around, yeah. get up and join them mm. and into a game of where you, you know, for instance, if you're running around in circles, you grab hands and you stand up and make a bridge pose. Mm. You know, really being flexible, just showing that you're engaged with your child in a way that's playful and helpful and you can't go wrong. I love that. That's really empowering for parents that it doesn't have to be super structured. It doesn't yeah. have to be going through pose one, two, three. It's meeting your kids where they're at, making sure that they're having a positive experience, engaging with them physically, emotionally. That kind of stuff sounds um, doable for parents, I think. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, maybe one more element to that is that comes about from having some sort of awareness or fun with yoga with kids is teaching them that ability to self-regulate mm. them how to incorporate some awareness of their breath and the power that their breath has in getting them into a different sort of frame of mind. Mm. And those just really fun techniques um, that can be used if you are, no matter what age you are. Mm -hmm. This is making me want to plug your um, another one of your yoga videos that we have, the Breathing Games one, um, which is a whole video about different activities you can do with kids and breath. And I think there was also one around like breathing as your superpower, right? Um, loved that one too. So there's a couple of good videos out there that you've done on breathing exercises that are available at kansasdiscovery.org backslash home. So folks should definitely check those out if they want more breathing exercises for little kids because those are really cool. And they don't, again, it really doesn't have to be anything formal or mm -hmm. regimented at all. Just, you know, sort of having those in your awareness mm -hmm. and thinking about incorporating them every now and then is really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, Kathy, those are the questions we have from our audience. What Are there any other common questions you get from parents about yoga with littles or other information that you think is important for parents to know? I think that the thing that I would say underscores all of that, Laura, is this idea that parents should let go of expectations mm. for hours. Okay. So don't, don't, don't engage with the idea that you're going to teach your child how to do A, B, and C pose. Maybe that will come eventually and they'll learn to do it. And that's really fun when they're a little bit older and it's developmentally appropriate, but teaching kids how to enjoy themselves through activities. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
breathing, movement, without any sort of value assigned to the outcome that it's supposed to mm. look a certain way. Mm. I think it's a really important life lesson. That's good advice for parenting broadly, isn't it? <laughs> Not yeah. just with yoga. Right. Thank, thank you for that, Kathy. <laughs> I think I think many parents tuning in need that on lots and lots of levels, and we are grateful for it. But just um, kids to you know understand that part of part of living and part of learning and you know finding that sort of sweet nectar in life is going through the process. Mm. And that mean that you're going to have an outcome of of any particular preconceived idea but just just going through the process of doing mm. and being is a really good way of looking at things yeah well thank you for that and thank you for joining us today um, for the first discovery baby workshop we are so excited friends to be relaunching this program discovery baby starting off here with kathy we have a few more live segments coming up so be sure to follow us here on facebook um, check out our website to make sure you get that full schedule at kansasdiscovery.org backslash baby that's where you can see all the dates we're hoping to transition from these facebook live segments into segments at the museum before too long. Um, the museum, by the way, is now open for time ticketed entry. We are open. Yay. Thank you, Kathy. Woohoo. Um, we are open Wednesday through Sunday. We have three hour play sessions that require advanced tickets. And we're working right now with reduced capacity and lots of great infection control procedures to make sure folks are staying safe and healthy. So we'd love to have you join us back at the Kansas Children's Discovery Center. Um, those of you who are watching at home, come on over. Um, and we hope to have you for Discovery Baby in just a few months um, once we we get things turned around um, away from virtual stuff so um, keep posted join us for all those things and we will be excited to have you um, check out that full schedule kansasdiscovery.org backslash baby and thank you so much for joining us kathy thanks laura thanks for all you do